Hello, everybody. Welcome to our course on differential equations. Have a wonderful afternoon, morning, or evening, whenever you listen to this course. Uh, welcome those who are live, present. We're at the end of the semester. People are very busy, so often they cannot watch the recording live, but hopefully you will see it later on. So today the program is as we started last week. We talk about the P-curvature. We will see several examples, and then we will see at least the statements of uh, two results concerning the vanishing and the nilpotence of the P-curvature. So <coughs> trying to get a, a feeling, we will see a couple of examples, but in the exercises I will give more, so you can practice a little bit. And of course, in the notes, all the details will appear. But I'm kind of delayed with the notes, as you have, may have noticed. But I hope that in February, I can complete whatever you need. So thank you for joining. And let's start. So the curvature continued. So I, last time I gave three different definitions. We have k as being of characteristic p positive. We take L, we can take polynomial coefficients, or we could take all the rational functions. Doesn't matter too much, differential operator. And we always look at zero. Consider locally at zero. So then we have uh, the first definition. So we have <coughs> P curvature of L. And it's a mysterious definition because it's just computational. Is the remainder n of the Euclidean division so we take del to the p and we write it as some operator r composed with l plus n where the order of n strictly less than the order of n. So this n is unique and called the p-curvature. So it falls a little bit from the sky, but that's the uh, first way to see it. Second, we have already studied last time how to transform the scalar equation into a system. So <clears throat> now let y prime equals a y, a prime of y, be a first order system. And here we have a matrix A, which will be an n by n matrix, and it will have <coughs> rational functions as entries. And then we define recursively, we take <coughs> a1 equal a, a k plus one, define a k prime plus a1 times a k, and then a p, which is a matrix here in, uh, in mn, Kx is the p curvature of the system. You remember. And the third definition was using modules. We take m equals kx to the n, so vectors of rational functions. functions 
and we let gamma be a connection, so gamma, and we think of del minus A from M to M, a connection. I don't recall, this is just the vectorial Leibniz rule. Then, so this involves differentiation inside Kx. Each component will be derived, but if you take the <coughs> p-fold composition, the p-fold composition, gamma p does not involve differentiation. So M is a free Kx module. So gamma to the P will be given by an N by N matrix. So gamma P will correspond to a matrix AP. I call it again AP but it's because it is the same in MM cakes. <coughs> again, called the P curvature. Okay, that's what we did already last time. It is just to refresh your, your brain. And, uh, uh, da -da. Now I want to transfer this to recurrences. So note, if we want to solve Ly equals zero, if we wish to solve Ly equals zero inside just power series in X, so, you know, in, in characteristic P, we don't have logarithms, but we have this ZI, so no ZI as in normal form theorem in characteristic P. Then we can do an unknown ansatz. Then ansatz Y of X sum y i x to the i, i from zero to infinity, <coughs> will give us a linear recursion for y of x. And we will see examples in a minute. Now, if our equation has a basis of power series solutions, we should find all these solutions by choosing different initial values. Yeah. <clears throat> Try to find basis of power series solutions. That's not always possible by varying the initial conditions, which are to be imposed. Okay. But in general, this, there will be some obstruction. In general, this will not be possible. And we see that the obstruction is actually the non-vanishing by of the P curvature. It's possible by the non-vanishing of the P curvature. Okay? So this was, if you do it with the scalar equation, you can also do it for our system. So uh, similarly, You can do the following. You take uh, y of x. I write y of x in order to indicate not a variable but a solution. So now in kx 
to the end, which is a solution of y prime times equals a y, a vector solution of power series. Again, need not exist, but if it exists, then we can expand, of course, y of x as well as y0 plus y1 x plus y2 x squared and so on. The yi are now just constant vectors, <coughs> and we get a vectorial yielding a vectorial a vectorial <coughs> linear recursion or the recurrence for yi. Okay. And I'm not going to do this here because the computation is a little bit complicated, but you should observe, uh, so see the exercises and the nodes. But what can be said already here is that A of X, I assume I always that it has entries rational functions. So we are looking at zero, so we can write a of x to some x to the minus m times a power series, b of x, b of x in m n Okay, so you expand B. This is just because you have the Laurent expansion here no, at zero. And uh, all denominators which are not multiples of X can be put in the power series. So <clears throat> once you have this and you plug your unknown solution, capital Y of X, into the equation, you put here X to the minus M times B, so M is a positive integer, <coughs> could be zero, of course, uh, but then you don't have a singularity, and then you compare completion. <coughs> you compare the coefficients. So plug this in, this into system, and compare coefficients. I should have done it in all generality, but I was a bit busy with other things, so I will only do it in a couple of examples. Okay, I hope you can live with this. And uh, where do we have our examples? Just to give you a little bit of feeling. Of course, you could ask why the p-curvature is called uh, the curvature. Well, this has to do with fiber bundles and connections, but I'm not going to do this here. Ah, by the way, do you hear me well? I think I, put, I forgot to put the microphone. Maybe it's better like this. OK, but now it should be even better. Thank you. So we start examples. I will not be able to do the whole theory with all proofs, but at least to give you a kind of impression and feeling what's going on. <clears throat> so let us consider y prime equals y in characteristic 3 or p. We have seen this example already. So in characteristic zero, we would expect the exponential function. Now, L is here, del minus one. Okay, so L zero would be del, okay, initial form. So let's take characteristic P for the moment. So let us compute the P curvature, that's not very difficult. 
I am grateful to Sergei Jokovic to, to give me the hint. Del to the p, you have to divide it by del minus 1, but you can just use, as all coefficients are constants, you can just use the geometric series, and you get del p minus 1 times del p minus 2 plus del plus 1 times L, which is del minus 1. And this, you multiplying out, you get delta p plus 1. So you have to take here plus 1. OK? So this here is the p curvature. This is n, the p curvature. So in this case, it's really easy. Otherwise, you have to use a computer program to make the division. And this tells you that it is non-zero in any characteristic. Non-zero in all characteristics. Which is good, because you will have a problem in all characteristics. Of course, the exponential function from characteristic 0 cannot be reduced mod p for any p. So we expect problems. And uh, indeed, if you go if you go to the linear recursion, which is trivial to compute, linear recurrence, <coughs> so we take y of x, now I write ck, x to the k, y prime of x, so here k goes from 0 to infinity, y prime of x sum k equals 1 to infinity, ck times k x to the k minus 1. And we plug this in, and we get <coughs> c0 is free, and k is free, as we expect. And then we get for k equals 1, c1 minus c0 equals 0. Very simple, c2 minus c1 is 0, k equals 3. C3. Sorry, sorry, here we have a 2, here we have a 3, of course. C2 is 0, the usual uh, generating function for the exponential. <coughs> and now you see, if you want to solve, if you start with C0 different 0, if C0 you choose non zero, you will get C1 non zero. And you run up to p. So here we have k equals p. p c p minus c p minus 1 equals 0. So up to c p minus 1 non-zero. And then we get a problem. Yeah? Because then we cannot solve. And we cannot solve for c p because p times cp is 0, different from cp minus 1. OK? So we have a problem, and we don't have any power series solution. We have already seen the actual solution. <coughs> so no power series solution in kx. And recall the actual solution lives in Kx, where we adjoin zeta 1, zeta n, and so on, infinitely many variables. OK? So the occurrence of this p here relates to the peak curvature. Any questions so far? What is my next example? OK. So <clears throat> let's see if you recognize this example. Uh, so this was number one. Number two, we take L equals x square del square minus del. 
which is just x del square, sorry, x del minus 1, x square del minus 1 composed with del, L0 is minus del. Yeah? So here the shift is minus 1, and this one has shift equals 0. So recall the initial form always is the one with the smallest shift, the sum of two Euler operators. Okay. Now, <coughs> again, we do uh, uh, yx equals ck x to the k. And then you run into the following. Gives a little bit of computation. If I didn't make a mistake, ck plus 1 equals k square minus k, k plus 1, ck. So again, c0 is arbitrary, is free. And if we take k equals 0 here, then we get c1 equals 0. Uh, no, I'm Yeah, c1 is 0. And then, uh, what do I want to say? You can write this, of course, also as k plus 1 times ck plus 1. Uh, you get all equal to 0. Uh, ck equals 0, k at least 0. So the only solution is the constant y of x equals c in k, which is, of course, a solution. But the second one, you don't see it. It's not a sec you want a second, as you have order two, the second solution, which exists by the general theory, does not show up. OK, if you look at this. So why is this the case? Just because <coughs> the initial form has order 1, by, whereas the operator has order 2. But so the order of L0 is less than the order of 0 of L, which implies that 0 is an irregular singularity. in which case you don't get any other power series solution. Yeah? So <coughs> this implies, as we have, I have mentioned this briefly, <coughs> exponentials of polynomials in 1 over x appear as factors of the solutions, and these are not, this implies that y of x, the second solution is not a power series. Okay? So the recurrence is very restricted if you just look at power series solutions. Now, the, the flavor of, of the peak curvature is that Whenever the peak curvature vanishes, then you will have a basis of power series solutions. I will come back to this in a moment. But before I want to do, I think, my third example, which is <coughs> still a little bit more complicated. But I hope that you see it. Now we already use what we have learned during the semester. This one was the irregular case. Now I will take a, an Euler operator. But I will take an Euler operator with a, with a local, we will consider an Euler operator with a local exponent of multiplicity 2. So we know already that in characteristic 0, 
logarithms will appear. So this would be 3. Now it's a little bit more complicated. L equals x square del square minus x del plus 1. So chi of s will be s minus 1 square. S rho equals 1 is a double root. So in characteristic, characteristic 0, logarithm will appear in the second solution. So what's going on in characteristic p? Uh, so here, of course, in characteristic 0, the y1 of x will be x, and y2 of x is x times log x. Okay. Now, in characteristic p, I will just look at the recursion, linear recurrence. So I did not compute this example with a p curvature, but you are invited to do so. Yeah? So we get, for k equals 0, we get z0 equals 0, no constant term. k equals 1 will give minus c1 plus c1 equals 0, so c1 in k is free, corresponding here. Of course, we can multiply this solution here with any constant. And for k at least 2, we get k minus 1 square ck equals 0. Now, there are two things to observe. First, in characteristic 0, this always gives you ck equals 0. For this solution, you don't get this one. And in characteristic p, it does not really matter because if this factor here becomes 0, it's still everything is 0. Okay? So ambiguous in characteristic p. And uh, exercise compute the p curvature of L. OK. So far, my first set of examples. Now, uh, I want to mention two theorems or, yeah, theorems, but without giving too much of a proof. And I will erase everything. So I already have given you some examples of p curvatures last time. You remember the example where for half of the primes, we had p curvature 0. And for the other half, we had p curvature non-zero, which was the exponential of the arc tangent, which is a kind of prototype pathological example. <coughs> In general, it's not so funny to compute the peak curvature. There are algorithms by Alin Bostan and Skost and uh, other people, but uh, mostly you do it in concrete examples just by starting maple. So <clears throat> Sergei is an expert in, in doing this. So the first thing we, we want to mention, at least uh, uh, indicate why it's true is a lemma or a theorem of Cartier. So Cartier, Pierre Cartier, was one of the prominent members of the Bourbaki group. He gave fantastic lectures at the Seminaire Bourbaki. I have had the chance to uh, listen several times to him, and he did report on any kind of work, not just on group theory or algebraic geometry. He was kind of a universal genius. And as far as I know, this lemma does not even appear in a paper of Cartier. 
And uh, <clears throat> I don't know precisely the story uh, who attributes it to Cartier. Maybe this was just personal communication between Dwork and Cartier. I don't know. So L in Kx del with equation Ly equals 0 in characteristic P, we are over field of characteristic P, admits. Now, we, when we talk about basis, we always have to take it over the, the field of constants, admits a K, let me call it like this, Laurent series in x to the p basis of power series solutions and we have already seen when you have power series solutions you could even assume polynomial or even polynomial solutions if and only if the P curvature of L vanishes. So this relates really, in some sense, this tells you no ZI appear in the solutions. OK? Now, uh, where do I have? I won't only give an idea idea of proof. So transform L y equals 0 in a system, capital Y prime equals A L times Y. Consider the induced connection. which I call gamma equals del minus al going from kx to the n, kx to the n. And <coughs> gamma p corresponding to a matrix A small p. Maybe I should erase the l here. Don't confuse, please, in mn kx. Okay. Sorry, I want to look at this over even this here. I want to take it in the Laurent series. Nevertheless, AP will be inside here because we can restrict it to polynomials are rational functions. So <clears throat> this means that if this is 0, so I only go in one direction. If gamma p is identically 0, then gamma is nilpotent. Gamma as an operator is nilpotent. Hence, the kernel of gamma is non-zero. So we find a vector y1 of x in kx to the n, a gamma of y1 of x equals 0. So we have at least one non-zero vector solution. And now we apply induction. So we go, we quotient out this y1, then pass on to, now all these are free modules, so we take kx to the n mod this vector y1 of x, so the submodule generated by y1 of x. Now, as is a free module, this will be isomorphic as a k vector space to kx 
n minus 1, and the induced connection Let me call it gamma bar. Now you have to check that the condition, everything goes through again, and you can apply induction on n. Now apply induction on n. On n. So inside here, you will get now a basis of solutions to get basis y2 bar up to of x, y n bar of x, in this kx to the n minus 1. And then you lift it back to kx to the n, and you are done. Finally, lift these to kx to the n. I will make it more precise in the notes. I am grateful to Florian Firmsin and uh, Nicolas Merkel for working this out. There is a different proof working directly with this color equation, but I don't give it here. Um, yes? Yeah, so for, for this proof, uh, to, for this idea to work, you would first have to show that the picture in the sense uh, of operator vanishing is equivalent to the connection vanishing uh, to the to the pf power of the, the connection on the yes on the vanishing yes that's uh, I, I know that I'm skipping <laughs> I'm apologize for this I'm skipping several technical details in the definition I gave the three definitions of the p curvature there's, what is missing is to prove that all three are equivalent to each other. Yeah? So that the vanishing of one is equivalent to the vanishing of another. Uh, and I hope to do this in the notes. Thank you, Raphael. That's, of course, uh, very important here. Yeah? But I cannot do everything, and especially on the, in these uh, video sessions, it's quite complicated to do uh, uh, very explicit and long proofs. So I, you have to be satisfied with the main ideas, and then I ask you to look at the notes. OK? Thank you. So this is a, the first statement, which tells us that the p-curvature really tells us something about the existence of power series solutions. And of course, the, the a key point here is that we look at the basis and not just at the single solution. So there's a theorem which I'm not going to, to prove at all, which is the following. This is <coughs> Dwork 1990 but which can be proven using the normal form theorem in characteristic P, which I mentioned and uh, quoted to you briefly. Now we take again a field of characteristic K, but we ask not the pre curvature to vanish, but just to be nilpotent. So K characteristic P, L again in Kx del, what else do we need? Yeah. Then <coughs> uh, I guess we assume that zero is a regular point. So in, in a suitable sense, uh, concerning the orders of the coefficients, uh, so this here, you see NFT the assumptions of NFT in characteristic P, which will also appear in the notes. I just have to put it inside. And then recall that whenever we are in this situation, the normal form theorem in characteristic P tells you that the solutions will depend on infinitely many variables Zi, which correspond to 
iterated logarithms in characteristic 0. And the theorem of Dwork tells you when only finitely many z i are involved. Yeah? Then L y equals 0 has a basis, so again, a k x p basis of solutions in. Now, k x z1 up to z l, so some l, zero. So finitely many z i are needed. Okay. Then it's that here if and only if the p curvature vanishes. Ah, uh, sorry, is nilpotent. If the p curvature of L is nilpotent. So if you see it as a as a matrix, it's just a nilpotent matrix. Okay. You can also see it as a differential operator, but you have to keep in mind that you're always in characteristic p. And once you have this, you can reduce again to having even polynomial solutions. Then even polynomial solutions. Okay. So the proof. The, you can look at a Dwork's paper, which is uh, quite computational and not so easy to read. So in the notes, I will present the proof, which is uh, due to Florian Fjernsin. via NFT in characteristic P. OK, C notes. So <clears throat> it's nice because these two results compare a little bit the functioning of the peak curvature. OK? And of course, we have, I, maybe I should write down again the peak curvature conjecture of Grotendieck. But before doing so, let's have a short break of five minutes. And then I will give you, I will formulate again the peak curvature conjecture. And then I will give you a result of Honda, which fits very nicely inside here. And we will conclude for today with a couple of examples. So a short break, and we meet again. OK, I'm back again. I hope you're also back again. And you had some Coke or coffee. And we can now reformulate the Grotendieck P curvature conjecture. As follows, I don't even have to speak about the peak curvature anymore. So L in K X del characteristic, oh, <coughs> sorry, K equals 0. Actually, K equals Q or K equals Q alpha in C, a number field. Then LP, let's assume that K equals Q to simplify my life. Then LP will be in FP X del, the reduction mod P, whenever defined. So actually, you can assume, if you work over the rational numbers, that the coefficients are even integers, and then you can always reduce. But sometimes you may get in the reduction even the, just a zero operator. Yeah? 
So we always have to exclude finitely many p. Then Ly equals 0 has a k basis of algebraic power series solutions. If and only if for almost all primes P, the induced equation LPY equals zero has a K X. This here, a kx. No, sorry, I have to be more precise. Has a kxp basis of. Now we can take either power series. Sorry, this is of course fp. Fpxp basis of power series solution. But as I said before, we can even assume polynomial solution of polynomial solutions. So you see, the P curvature by the lemma of Cartier disappeared completely. Now, <clears throat> the remark is that if you have, if you assume that you have in characteristic zero, if Ly equals 0 has a k basis of solutions in Zx, okay. so integral coefficients and power series, then you can take this modulo p, then star, so this, then lpy equals 0 gets the induced basis, fp xp basis, just by reduction, mod p. And so the assumption is satisfied and the assumption holds. And the second property, holds for almost all p. It could happen that the reduction mod p makes the basis elements no longer linearly dependent, independent. But for almost all pieces works. And then you could ask whether in, under this condition you do we, this is now a stronger condition, do we then have uh, the characteristic zero solution of Ly equals zero already algebraic? So that's apparently a weaker conjecture than Rodentick's conjecture. We are not sure if it is equivalent. So this appears in Bézivin, I think 1981 or 1989, conjecture or question. And uh, not clear if so it is clear that the validity of Rodentick would imply a Bézivin, but it's not clear whether B is equivalent. How do we write equivalent to G? Okay. Even for order two, it's not clear. That's uh, maybe easier to prove than the conjectures themselves, but I cannot tell you anything about this. Okay. So. <clears throat> this reduction mod p 
often works, but not always. And I will give you examples where you cannot reduce so easily. Examples. So the solution is characteristic P look different, look different from the solutions in characteristic zero. First example, we take, I start in characteristic zero, yx equals minus log one minus x, which is a nice power series, x plus x square half plus x cubed third, and so on, in cx, or even qx, whatever you want. OK, the differential equation, differential operator is L equals da, 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 1 minus x del square minus del. The second solution is just a constant, y2 of x equals 1. So it's a very nice equation. But mod p, mod p, we get the solution. Of course, we get again the constant one, y1. So let me call this y1 of x. y1 of x is x plus, so it looks the same, x squared half plus x cubed 3, but then you run into p with your denominators. No? So then you get xp minus 1 divided by p minus 1. That's still OK. But for xp, you have a problem. And what you get is plus xp minus 1 times z1. That's again due to Florian Fjonsin. Okay. So you get here something which depends on z1, OK? Which, of course, is OK because it does not contradict Bézivan's conjecture because the logarithm uh, is not algebraic, OK? This was the example number one. Example number two, bo All these are quite funny. We take L equals x minus x squared del minus x, y equals 1, 1 minus x in characteristic 0 is a solution. And in fp, in fp, x, we get y equals 1 plus so of course, this here is just 1 plus x plus x square, and so on, the geometric series. But in characteristic p, we get a polynomial, namely x p minus 1. So you might expect, ah, oh, OK, you always stop at degree p. That's not correct, because in the next example, which is a little bit more complicated. We take L x plus all this is due to Florian minus 2x4 minus x5 plus x7 del minus x plus 2x4. We get characteristic 0, y of x equals 1 plus x plus x4 plus x7, it's periodic, plus x10, and so on. And in characteristic 3, for instance, the solution is y of x is 1 plus x minus x cubed. So here you go up to degree p. And you can construct examples where you even go further. OK? Degree. Very good. So I am almost through. 
Uh, I conclude with, let me check if I don't miss anything, no? I will conclude with the theorem of Taira Honda, but for this I have to erase. So, there's this article of Honda, which is very famous. It is not his own article, it is a manuscript of people listening to his course in Tokyo in 1971, I think. And uh, as, as Honda passed away a couple of weeks after his lecture, some people in the audience decided to write up his, his presentation. And this is available now as a manuscript. It is not complete. There are some ambiguities or incomplete proofs, but it's very inspiring. And in some sense, Honda explains some parts of the work of Katz to a general audience. So it is much more accessible than the, than the proofs and papers of Nicholas Katz. So Honda. Uh, now compares characteristic zero with characteristic p. So theorem Honda 1971, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe that's not correct. Please don't blame me. We take L over Q operator and I want to, don't want to fix p, but I'd call the reduction just L bar. Denote by L bar in f p x del. You can again, you can do it over number fields, but we don't need it. The reduction of L mod p, and then. Yes. So it does not tell you anything about the algebraicity, but it tells you the following. Then Ly equals 0 as a Q basis of power series solutions if and only if L bar y, and I should here add a p, of course, as a basis over f p x p. You always have to indicate of power series solutions. Or even polynomials. So that's not completely obvious that you can back, can go back, and here you have to zoom for almost all p. All primes p. <coughs> now there you can look at the proof of Honda. Uh, Another idea of proof, idea of proof, either as in Honda or may use. Now I recall that we had the normal form theorem, we had it in characteristic zero and characteristic p, and both give you an algorithm to compute the solution. And the trick is to compare both algorithms. Or may use the normal form theorems in characteristic 0 and characteristic p together with their algorithms 
constructing solutions. So, of course, the interesting direction is going from characteristic P to a characteristic zero. Interesting direction, characteristic P implies characteristic zero statement. Okay. And so you assume that uh, Ly equals 0 does not admit the basis of power series solution. So by contradiction, assume that Ly equals 0 has a solution y of x in k x. Now recall that we had here z involving z. Recall this corresponds to the logarithm of x. Okay. So you take such a solution, a non-zero, of course. Okay. And then you run the algorithm and you look when the first time the z appears. Then observe when z appears in y of x for the first time in the power series expansion. And then you take your prime p, and you construct for each p a solution z of x of the characteristic p equation in a way which corresponds up to this first time with y of x. And then you look precisely what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, first time, and construct a solution. I cannot be very precise here. Z of x of L bar y equals 0, or L bar z equals 0, which agrees with y of x, or with the reduction with y bar of x up to this stage. where the z appears. So that's kind of tricky how to do this. You will find it in the notes. And then when you look very carefully at the next step, where in y of x the z appears, you realize by the very choice of z that also there a zi appears. Okay? And then you're done. It's, it's very systematic, but it's a little bit complicated. Okay? So I finish today with the last example. <clears throat> um, can I ask you a question? Yes, please. So with Honda theorem, if uh, Grotendieck's conjecture were to be true, that would mean that uh, an operator uh, in characteristic is zero, uh, having a basis of power series solution means that it also has a uh, uh, basis of algebraic solutions? Yes. Yes, yeah, that's actually what ba Bezivan's conjecture says. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, Bezivan's yeah. conjecture uh, states that it has to have a, a not too big uh, uh, denominators. Yes, of course. Yes, okay. right. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I conclude with one example where uh, it's not very instructive, but for the computation of the of the p curvature, this is due to Bergen-Jokovic. So you take L del square 
plus 2x plus 1 del minus x minus 2, characteristic 0. And then we take n characteristic 0. And we take p equals 3. We reduce in the, then the system y prime equals ay is given by you just transform this in a system and you get the matrix a equals 0 1 x plus 1 2 plus x so you don't even have a singularity here taken mod 3 so now we run the the recurrence for the p curvature a1 is a a2 was a1 prime plus a1 square, and you get x plus 1, 2 plus x, x square, and uh, x square plus 2x, again, mod 3. And a3 is a2 prime plus a2 times a1. And here you will see that you get something which is non-zero, x squared, x squared plus 2x, x cubed plus x, and x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2. This is in terms of the matrix. This is a p curvature. So it is a 3 curvature. And if you do it uh, in terms of the scalar equation, alternatively, we can divide del cubed divided by L gives del cubed equals del plus x plus 2. Again, we're now in characteristic 3. L plus x squared plus 2x del plus x square. And this is now the, the scalar p curvature. And this one is the matrix p curvature. And the exercise will be so show that this is correct and that they correspond to each other. Show that they are not the same, but the same in quotation marks that passing from this color, you got this matrix. OK? So I'm finishing a little bit earlier today. No problem. You are very patient, and I appreciate your interest. So we have one more session next week, and then we will be through. Uh, next week, I hope to tell you a little bit about the theorem of Boykos uh, Heckman about the algebraicity of solutions characterized in terms of the local exponents and what is called the interlacing of the local exponents. Uh, this will be a kind of different flavor, but also very nice. And then we are through with this course. So if you need a certificate, just send me an email. And if you want to do an exam, send me also an email. And we can meet by Zoom. And I can give you a grade. <clears throat> of course, if you are outside Austria, this grade has to be approved by your university. OK? There's a question. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. I just would like to uh, go back a little to Randa's theorem, uh, because I fear I don't understand something. So if we take the normal equation for the exponential, uh, okay. so y prime is equal to y. Uh, this is a, uh, a, an equation with, uh, with uh, rational coefficients. It has a uh, power theory uh, solutions basis. So if Grothendieck theory was, uh, if Grothendieck uh, conjecture was true, it should mean that it also has a Algebraic solution uh, basis, and we know that this is 
this isn't the case. So are we missing uh, a nice <laughs> thesis or do I misunderstand something? So here in FP X, so no ZI. And uh, in our solution of, the exp of y prime equals y, you recall that the solutions involve the z1 up to z infinity. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the hypothesis here is not fulfilled. Yeah, yeah okay. But, uh, so it's not an if and only if. It does not work in the, in the two directions. No, no, it, I, it, it, it does work. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, you're right. Uh, thank you, Raphael. If we have to see it like this, yes. Oh, yeah. Let me check. Maybe it was just a typo. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not an if and only. If I copied it wrong, it is just if you have, thank you very much. If you have the basis of power series solution mod p for almost all p, then you have a power series solution in characteristic zero. Okay? okay yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Very good observation. So that's already an exam almost, no? Okay. So have a wonderful evening. See you <laughs> next week, and thank you for your interest. And I hope that I can continue with the notes and with the exercises soon. Okay? When the exercises appear on the website, I will send you a link. Uh, uh, Email. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. bye.